What's the oldest known bird? That may be an easy question to some, but it's not as easy as you think, because some people may have just said, oh, well, dinosaurs are, right? No. Now, dinosaurs are not birds. They are closely related to birds. Birds descend from them, and birds, therefore, are under the umbrella of dinosaur. But dinosaurs aren't birds. It's kind of like the square is a rhombus, but a rhombus isn't a square thing. You know, like one is the other, but the other is not the other. It may be a little confusing at first, but the point here is that no, dinosaurs are not the oldest known birds because they're not birds. So what is the oldest known confirmed bird? Well, a recent discovery um, does show that we have found what could be called the oldest known proper bird. And this particular bird dates back to about 120 million years ago which is actually quite a bit longer than what modern paleontologists had been thinking all this time. This particular bird isn't quite the same as a modern bird, though looking at it, it does look like a bird. For one thing, it has a toothless beak, which is a critical component of modern birds that makes them different from their ancestors. After all, old school theropods, had they had teeth. They had a lot of teeth. Birds don't. They have their beaks, hard beaks. This particular species has been named Imperavis attenborough-i, or Attenborough-i. I'm not sure the exact pronunciation of what it be, but what it means is Attenborough's strange bird, because it was named in honor of British naturalist Sir David Attenborough, who, fun fact, I think I mentioned this before, but I like saying it, is actually the brother of Richard Attenborough, who played John Hammond in Jurassic Park. So yeah, both brothers are closely associated with this sort of thing. Every single bird in the modern day does descend from dinosaurs. We know that for a fact. And some of the earliest ones look a lot like dinosaurs. But the thing about Imperavis is that it doesn't look like a dinosaur. It looks like a bird, but it showed up before dinosaurs were extinct. So, excuse me, sir. Are you in the wrong time period? Well, this particular creature belonged to a rather diverse group of birds that are known as, and I'm gonna try to pronounce this, just bear with me, Anantiornithines, I think is how you say it. The unique thing about this group is that they are sometimes casually referred to as opposite birds. The reason is that while outwardly they do resemble modern birds, their internal structure is slightly different. Their shoulder joint. In particular, most members of this group actually did have teeth and had clawed digits. While outwardly they would probably resemble a modern bird, they had the teeth and the little fingers on the wings. Dinosaur traits. But Imperavis is different. There are no teeth here. There are no spaces for teeth either. It was a toothless bird. And prior to finding it, the oldest known toothless birds was 70 million years ago. This is a pretty major jump in time in terms of this trait showing up. Another interesting element of the remains shows that this animal would have had a giant bicipital crest jutting out at the top of the upper arm bones where the muscles would attach. Crests like this are seen in late Cretaceous birds. But again, it's an early Cretaceous bird. So what's the deal here? The paleontologists spent a great deal of time studying it and trying to figure out exactly how this animal would have lived. They did possess very large attachment points for muscles on the wing bones, which suggests they likely generated quite a bit of power. The one thing that doesn't make this animal strange for its time period are the forelimb digits, which like the rest of the group, do appear on this animal's remains. They did have little tiny baby claws. They also wouldn't have possessed a modern digestive organ known as a gizzard that modern birds have, used to crush up their food for easier digestion. This particular element suggests to the paleontologists that the evolutionary pressures that resulted in the toothlessness probably weren't actually the same as the ones that resulted in modern birds, since they probably wouldn't have eaten the same food, or at least not in the same way and that it would have had a much more unique diet compared to other related animals of the time. This may have been the big benefit here, if I had to guess. The evolutionary pressures were because there was a lot of competition for food. If the species can specialize to eat something very specific, while that does present a problem if that food source ever vanished, it also means they didn't have to compete with other members of their group, because they were consuming completely different resources. And despite the similarities to modern birds, 
these aren't necessarily their direct ancestors. Anansi ornithines went extinct about 66 million years ago, along with most of the dinosaurs, a different group entirely, called ornithoromorphs, were the ones that survived, and led to birds we know now. As such, it's hard to say where this animal would fit in the evolutionary equation. Yes, they definitely have traits associated with modern birds, but based on what we know from other information, they can't be their direct ancestors. So, um, what are you? You're strange. You're a strange bird. Attenborough's strange bird, to be precise. And with that, a special thank you goes to my Apex Predators, Dr. Racer78, Metal for Life Guy, and Arthur Roy. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.